Hi, in this video I am going to talk about uh, what is corneal density estimation and what is the motivation behind doing corneal density estimation and I'll also show you how to uh, you know how to uh, do this in SAS so I'll take an example and, and do the estimation and I'll show you how we can have the kernel density uh, estimation plot and how we can use these plots in data analysis. So what is the motivation behind learning kernel density estimation? Well, many a times you will come across variables or features which are not following any formal uh, probability density uh, distribution. Okay, so what are the you know typical distributions that we have learned in our school and colleges whether it's normal distribution whether it's binomial whether it's weighable so these are some of the you know the, uh, the probability distribution functions that we have learned now many times you will find data that doesn't follow uh, any of these formal uh, probability distributions and that's when we face the issue that how do we uh, analyze this data well how do we uh, do the exploratory data analysis on this data which doesn't follow any uh, formal um, or any uh, you know theoretical probability distribution so in such cases kernel density estimation comes to our rescue it helps us greatly in understanding the distribution of the data set that doesn't follow any of this you know formal or this theoretical probability distributions so before that before getting into the details of what uh, you know kde or kernel density estimation is so i'll talk about what statistical estimation is and many of you must know what statistical estimation is I'll just give a brief overview because that's important for those who don't know what statistical estimation is. Well, it's, uh, in statistics, uh, you always deal with what is known as population and sample, right? And sample, in most of the times, it's smaller than the population. It's just a subset of the population. Now, a reason why most statisticians and in statistical modeling, rest uh, or, or any statistical theory involves uh, sampling that means taking a smaller set of data points from the population is because you cannot work with the direct uh, population because it's too big many times it's unavailable it is not available to you you do not have the entire population data with you so you just take a sample of it and then do your uh, study on that and then you make a conclusion for the population right which is an approximation right which is an approximation of what is going to happen in population now if your approximation is very closer to what actually uh, exists in population then your statistical estimation is quite good or it's a good statistical estimation that's what we call right so statistical estimations are basically of two types parametric estimations and non parametric estimations and what the differences are well parametric estimation is when your data follows a theoretical distribution for instance we have normal distribution right it's a parametric distribution right and any parametric distribution involves parameters which we uh, find out from the uh, estimation process right so what are the parameters in normal distribution one is mu which is the mean mean of the data and the second one is standard deviation right standard deviation so if you know mean and standard deviation you can always replicate or you can always come up with the data for a given normal distribution Okay, you can always plot the data uh, given it's, uh, you can always find the, you know, the probability density function, okay, given it's mu and sigma, mean and standard deviation. Well, that's not possible in the case of non-parametric uh, estimation. You won't have parameters such as mu and sigma. 
So non-parametric estimation is useful when there is no such functional form that involves parameters and a functional form with form of the probability distribution function. If that doesn't exist, you go ahead with what is known as non-parametric distributions. And one basic difference is that you do not get any parameter out of this estimation. Okay. And we'll also see this in context of regression. Uh, I'll talk about uh, in brief later. Uh, so let's first understand the theory of KDE. Well, as I've said, this is a non-parametric way of estimating the probability density functions. Uh, probability density function is uh, shortly known as PDF. Now, in the normal PDF, in normal distribution, uh, you get the PDF like this, right? It's very well known, the bell curve, right? Um, similarly, for binomial, for variable, for you know Bernoulli, any distribution you take, you can actually have a PDF very uh, similar PDF for a given distribution and that's parametric because you always have a parameter place in, in place and the uh, shape of the uh, distribution or probability distribution function will always look the same right normal uh, probability distribution function always looks like this right it always looks like this but this is not possible for many data sets or many variables and that's where KD uh, is very useful so it is gives a way to come up with the probability density function without having any parameter without estimating any parameters and this useful in data smoothing many a times there are also other uses but one of the uh, primary use is uh, data smoothing Given that this is a non-parametric, uh, there is very less restrictions and a very less assumption as well. Unlike parametric uh, estimation, where there are a number of assumptions. Uh, if you are familiar with linear regression, uh, there are many, uh, you know, assumptions uh, of linear regression. It has to be linear, then uh, linear in parameters then the error terms have to be you know normally distributed and so on so these uh, assumptions are not there in non parametric uh, you know estimations okay mathematically uh, a kernel density function or or that's what we are trying to find out right a pdf of a uh, given variable x which are random variables which takes like x1, x2 and so on. Okay. So we have this data. We have this variable x. And we want to have this PDF. Because we know for sure that x doesn't have any theoretical distribution. Such as normal or binomial or show. Or any of this. Or it could be. You know you can actually have. Use a KDA to also find out a normal distribution. Okay. But then when you already have a normal distribution in place. No point in doing it non-parametric estimation but if you are very sure about the fact that there is no uh, theoretical distribution that fits x then better to go with KDE kernel density estimation so kernel density estimation will give us the probability density function and we call that as f cap because this is estimated so we'll call it as f cap is given by 1 by nh summation over k and you know the x is is uh, you know is the is the functional form because it's a function of x and the function of h because these are two things which are to be uh, you know this could be variable because we could vary and for a given value of x okay so x could be x1 x2 or x3 right uh, and divided by h and talk about what this you know this parameters like h and k are well, k is a function, it's not a parameter. So, k is nothing but uh, called kernel function, uh, which has a property that it's a non-negative. So, this doesn't take a negative value. It's a non-negative uh, negative function and it integrates to 1. Okay. So, this is a special type of function um, called kernel function, which has these two properties, non-negative and it integrates to 1. H is known as smoothing parameter 
and it's also called bandwidth okay so smoothing parameters decide the smoothness of the curve okay and it could differ right um, so people who are familiar with many of the machine learning models who have come up with some of these tuning parameters right or smoothing parameters uh, so there also we use lambda as smoothing parameters like right? so something similar so h will determine a smoothness of your curve a smoothness of your PDF okay how smooth it is we'll see an example to understand that okay so KDE or kernel density estimation uh, through which you will get a PDF is somewhat similar to histogram how you will do a histogram so if you do not have a theoretically probability distribution the crude way or the very easy way to you know visualize your data is to have a histogram because Histogram itself is non-parametric in nature, so you don't need a parametric estimation to, to you know draw a histogram for a given variable. You can easily do that, right? Kernel density estimation is somewhat better than histogram. It it is somewhat more interpretable and more uh, sort of rigorous in terms of you know its ability to show uh, you know the distribution of the data, but it's somewhat similar. So we'll understand this to uh, understand KDE in the context of building a histogram and how it's different from uh, histogram. So here we have six data points, x1, x2, x3, x4, 5, 6. We have six data points and we'll build a histogram and a KDE plot uh, or PDF uh, by KDE uh, distribution. Is something very approximate again I, I'm going to give a disclaimer here that this PDF will be more of an approximation and you would uh, rather do an estimation in a uh, in a real scenario okay and and for which obviously nowadays all softwares have uh, KD uh, function that can well be used you don't have to do it manually but I'll show you how you can actually do it manually and you will, you will be able to better understand the differences between a histogram and a KD and what the similarities are. Well, these data points, you can have a histogram like this. Like how you, you divide an entire, uh, you know, your X values into smaller sub beans with a upper limit and a lower limit. So the values comes from, you know, minus 5 to so negative 5 to uh, positive 10 okay now we'll see what is x1 x1 is uh, minus 2.1 so this falls somewhere here so if this falls here we'll create a we'll draw a box here right and in y axis it's nothing but the percentage of uh, you know data points falling in that bean right so this determines the percentage Right? That's what we see in a histogram, right? Percentage of data points falling in the given bean, and the bean or the value of x will be here, and x has this the six values. Okay, so minus two point one. So we have histogram here, and then we have uh, minus one point three, and then minus point four. So so from two point five to zero, we have got two data points. So we'll have two boxes, one boxes here, this one, and on top of that, we'll have another boxes because in that range, within that given interval of minus 2.5 to 0, we have two data points, x2 and x3. So that's why it is, you know, there are two boxes on top of it, on the top of the first one. From 0 to uh, positive 2.5, we have only one data point, x4. So we have one box here then we got 5.1 which falls here right uh, from okay from let's say 5 to 5 uh, 7.5 so we have one box then another one box again okay so this is how the histogram is built now the the way we build a density function out of it using kde something very similar however instead of this boxes will just a no, will put a normal curve okay a normal curve with certain standard deviation okay um, 
so you can see instead of the box over here you can see here exactly here uh, like uh, the 4 point x x1 equal to negative 2.1 we put a normality curve here you can see this one right the one i am seeing so instead of a box we're just putting a a normal probability density function pdf which is normal in nature again for the second interval second bean that we had these two boxes right one over the other so we instead of these two boxes we had two normal distributions okay two ones okay and then for third then we had another normal distribution over here for the fourth we have this one for fifth we have this one now you can see the second and third are overlapping so you just add them add them up okay so you just add them up and this summation of it will obviously be much higher right so that's why this peak we have here right so you simply take the uh, added value of all these values okay and then you create a final curve so this final curve is nothing but a summation of of all these smaller normal curve and the final one is not necessarily a normal one and in fact it is not a normal one and it has bimodal like there are two modes right uh, this is one mode and this is another mode so uh, unlike many theoretical distributions such as normal PDE PDF kernel density estimation can give you uh, bimodal or multimodal uh, curves okay so it's nothing but simply the summation of the individual normal probability density functions that we have fitted for each data point okay so that's the way we calculate and here we have used the kernel as Gaussian because Gaussian is nothing but your normal PD probability density function. But there are so many other uh, kernel density functions could be rectangular, triangular, biweight, uniform, cosine and on so on. Depending on what kind of kernel density function you are using you, will, you might get a different result. The second important thing is the bandwidth. Well bandwidth determines the smoothness of the curve okay if you keep on changing bandwidth you will get different uh, type of uh, uh, kernel density plot and what is the best bandwidth to be used and bandwidth is what we saw h in the formula so ba the best bandwidth is used to cross validation like in many statistical modeling uh, some of the parameters like tuning parameters um, or smoothing parameters are determined through cross validation uh, you also find uh, the h the value of h which is the bandwidth to cross validation so cross validation is nothing but testing your uh, you know you know statistical estimates so testing your uh, what you have done in a completely new data and see for what value of h you are getting the best fit you are getting the best result and that's what you use so you do it you know uh, randomly for many times for n many values of h and the one that gives you the most optimal result is going to be the final one okay so what are the uses well it's basically used to calculate uh, pdes pdf for data that doesn't have uh, a proper theoretical pdf otherwise in fact, in most real world scenario, you won't get a theoretically uh, sound, uh, I, mean, I mean, data that actually fits a theoretical distribution, probability distributions. Most of the times, uh, the data won't fit. And that's when you get, in order to get a smooth PDF or a CDF or a survival curve, you use kernel density estimation. This is very useful in such cases. Uh, in understanding the distribution of data, doing exploratory data analysis, uh, KDE helps a lot, especially understanding how your data uh, is distributed throughout its, uh, you know, different uh, quantiles and percentiles. It's it's a good way to visualize your data. So we'll see how to do it. We'll take an example in SAS, and we'll we'll understand uh, how it's actually done and how it looks. So here is the data. We have got only one variable, 
and we assume that for this variable we do not have uh, or this variable um, doesn't fit into any of this theoretical distribution such as normal distribution, Poisson distribution or binomial distribution and so on. So, uh, so I already have the data. I'm going to first run the kernel density estimation. So PROC KDE is the one to be used for this. I'm going to use this as a data channel and the variable because this is a univariate, there is only one uh, variable to be uh, used in this estimation, which is length. I'm going to run this code. All right. So when I run this code and okay, so this is. This, the plot that you can see here is nothing but the uh, probability density function for this given data. I can, if you see, if you see the histogram, there is. It looks like that it doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't resemble or it, it doesn't look similar to any of these theoretical probability distribution. It certainly doesn't look like a normal distribution or a Poisson distribution or a binomial distribution or any other such distributions. It's a good way is to use a KDE instead of you know fitting other uh, probability distribution functions. So the one that we can see uh, this uh, you know this uh, curve is nothing but a PDF for this data. Okay. All right. So we'll see a few more. Okay. So what we can see here is that using the different bandwidth, so uh, or different smoothing parameters. Okay. Now we'll have two plots, one with a bandwidth uh, value of 2 and the other one with 0.25, right? Remember what we talked about H, the smoothing parameter or the bandwidth, we'll have a different value and see how, you know, both looks different. So you will see that uh, the PDFs coming out from the same data but with different bandwidth is going to look different. The first one is with the bandwidth of 2. The second one is with the bandwidth of 0.25. Now you can see this is this looks much better. This look this fits the data, whereas the second one overfits the data, right? It doesn't look as smooth. So you know you have to tweak your para bandwidth parameter in such a way that it is it fits your data and it runs smooth enough. Okay. Um, and there are statistical way of doing it also and it, it need not have just only two values you can have you know several values maybe you know few hundred values which is of course computational extents uh, intensive but you can have this value hundred values and and see which one actually gives you the best fit through some statistical fit measure or some matrix you can be used to see if that fits your data the best which one fits your data the best okay so you can you can do it uh, more like you know experimental way where you can use many such bandwidth parameters and fit the data and see which one is the best fit we'll also see that for bivariate case bivariate nothing is nothing but two variables okay so we'll have two variables x and y so if x and y two uh, variables are there we can also fit a kernel density plot somewhat difficult to interpret but it also looks quite good and also helps us understanding the distribution of data many a times when doing statistical modeling it's important not to understand uh, a single variable uh, correctly it also important is to understand uh, two variables uh, the distribution of two variables or more than two variables jointly so understanding the joint distribution of to uh, important variables is important and that can well be done with uh, kernel density estimation okay so the keyword here is bivar instead of univar in the last case so here you can see this is the kernel density plot for the bivariate case now here also you can change the bandwidth and have different plots as well okay so that flexibility is also available for um, bivariate distribution okay okay 
Another important and very practical use of kernel density estimation is when you present your data uh, and you explain your model and your distribution of data to the audience. Right? That's when you need density, histogram, really good plots and uh, so this helps quite uh, greatly in uh, you know doing these things. So instead of simply doing a plot, if you use KDE in terms of doing all these things, then you you would be uh, you will have much better plots and much better uh, you know statistics in place. So what we am going to do is that I'm going to get density histogram uh, and histogram density together in one plot, and we also try to get the probability density for two different variables in just one plot. All that can be done in this procedure. Right, so that's flexibility is there. Okay, since you are giving, uh, getting a, a number of plots, it's going to take some time, but I'm sure uh, it's worth the wait. So the first one is the histogram. That's what we have asked for. The second one is only the probability density function or the kernel density uh, curve, right? So this is the one. Okay, together with uh, histogram. So that's what uh, KDE with histogram. And then we have the uh, probability density for two variables, X and Y, and both have been overlaid. Right. You can have any number of such variables. So that helps understanding the, you know, the proper smooth distribution of two variables. And you can see the similarity and the dissimilarity between the distributions of uh, such, uh, you know, data. So it's quite useful uh, in uh, statistical model modeling and also in uh, building model in machine learning. Uh, one reason is primarily to understand the distribution of data which helps greatly in building uh, more sophisticated models.